Hello and welcome to the highlights of this contest between New Zealand and South Africa played at Eden Park in Auckland, New Zealand. Well, the teams for the match, one change in the New Zealand lineup, Mark Greatbatch coming in with John Wright uh, having shoulder problems, New Zealand captained by Martin Crowe. Kepler Vessels uh, captaining South Africa and uh, they have a very good fielding lineup. Tertius Bosch comes into the side from uh, that that defeated Australia. He replaces Merrick Pringle. We pick up the uh, game in the fourth over and it's Andrew Hudson facing the off spinners of Deepak Patel. Oh! We'll have a go for it. I think he's got to have a go for it. He's got a bottom edge and that'll go for four. Because I don't think Patel's going to have the fun that he had there against Australia with these blokes. Make the most of it, son, because uh, I think that mid wicket boundary is going to take a bit of a pummeling. Yes. Andrew Hudson goes on the sweep here. The ball's just a little bit too full. Flicks him on the pad, but goes down fine. Four, four, four leg buys. Oh, he's bowled him. That's a dreadful shot. Frustration creeping into Hudson's game there. I think he was trying to get it away into the mid wicket area. Lifted his head a little bit. The ball turned slowly back, hit the stumps, and Hudson on his way back to the pavilion. The New Zealanders have got it off to a good start. This Chad Dipak Patel in frustrating Hudson, just turns a fraction on him. Hudson looking to attack that mid wicket boundary, and uh, disaster for South Africa. One wicket for eight. It's Peter Kirsten, the number three for South Africa. Oh, he's gone. Vessels has caught behind, playing it a wide delivery. He's been very, very subdued so far, getting a little frustrated. It was short. He normally plays that cut shot very well. I think it probably bounced a little more than he expected. Hit the top edge of the bat, went flying away to the keeper. Good catch, this one. That's the end of Kepler Vessels. Big blow for South Africa. Yes, Willie Watson there showing his delight. Ball just uh, leaving Kepler slightly. He wasn't quite in line. Two for ten. And uh, the new batsman is Hansi Kronier. Just 22 years of age. As Martin Crowe, he's in complete control here at the moment. He looks so confident, making 100 first up with the bat. Fielding that short mid-wicket. Two catches close to the wicket on the off and onside. Oh, he sweeps from outside off stump. Not really going to Patel hand on head. Cronje aware of the fact that uh, at some stage South Africa are going to need runs today. Trying to play around with Tipak Patel there. Not connecting. Not making the most of it. The chance for hits. There's a throw. Oh, that was close. Is that Harris? That was Cairns, I think, coming in. My well, he had him cold. If he hit the stumps, he was the guy that ran out Dean Jones with that magnificent throw last Saturday here at Eden Park. This time he misses. Cronier desperate to look for the single here. Hits it very firmly to Chris Cairns there. Throw comes in well and would have left Cronier just stranded short there had he hit the stumps. The pressure on South Africa now to lift their run rate. There's an indication there that quick single. That's a great shot. Cairns misses, that's four. Peter Kirsten using his feet breaks the shackles for South Africa. Well, this is the answer for the South African batsman. Peter Kirsten, a very good player of spin. He's not averse to laying back to cut, to going down the wicket on this occasion. He's used his feet well. He's found the gap. He's just beaten the sprawling dive there. Could have got a hand on it, but it's beaten the fielder. Chris Cairns and gone down to the boundary for four runs. As Chris Harris comes into the attack. Shell, he's gone, is he sure? Yes, that's the third wicket down. New Zealand on top here at Eden Park. A little gentle push outside the line. So Harris strikes with his first delivery, and the crowd's gone mad. Well, things certainly going for New Zealand here. Hansi Cronje will be a very unhappy man there. A very ineffective dab. He's just trying to run the ball down to third man there. A ball of full, full length outside the off stump. Ian Smith, a very simple catch. Pillar reporter, no problems giving it out. And South Africa, three for 29. Keeper David Richardson joins Peter Kirsten. Hesitation there. 
finally Richardson is home not without some uh, fear and trepidation but this is typical of the New Zealand fielding at the moment really putting pressure a little bit of indecision there between the two batsmen had that a hit well you can judge for yourself but uh, South Africa certainly struggling that's pretty well hit it's going to be wide of uh, the long on there Andrew Jones so a much needed boundary for South Africa it's 3 for 39 after 20 and uh, it's going to be Rod Latham. And he hasn't got away with that one. Peter Kirsten uh, has had some trouble placing the ball today, but misplaced too many of those shots. Yes, I think the South Africans here want to see short pitch deliveries just like that. Peter Kirsten really delighted to receive a short pitch delivery which he can get away. South Africa really tied down present. Umpire Pillu reporter at the southern end. From India. Yeah, the ball just nips back at Peter Kirsten. He's on the front foot, outside the line, and uh, the umpire had no hesitation in giving it not out. an example of uh, how much easier it is to thump the ball and to place it well off the back foot. This Peter Kirsten uh, has hit one the last over off Latham on the leg side, pitch short. And here uh, Larson comes in short again, and that just as Ian was saying, that's exactly where they really want the New Zealand bowlers to be bowling. Vital stage, it's very important that Rod Latham gets his length right here. It's hit straight down the ground, that's beautifully placed. Fine shot. This, this is a good shot by Dave Richardson. The South African's been tied down, and here Latham comes on, pitches it up. Dave Richardson plays right through it, one bounce into the side screen, four runs. That's a super shot. As again, it's in the air. That's not core. Cool. Half foul here. Cover. Great batch, Mark. Great batch diving to his left. A little bit slow to get in. Gathered it well on the half foul. Dave Richardson mustn't get too impatient here. They've already got five off the over. And uh, Rod Latham seems to be the player to get after. Yeah, he gets after that one. And it just bounces in front of, in front of Mark Great back. It's going to be Chris hands coming into the attack because Rod Latham's proved far too expensive. He was chipped away for four, he's found the leg stump and an extra pace, Peter Kist first and brings up a fine 50. In fact it's a magnificent 50 in the context of the match. He's held South Africa together, but it very well against Australia at the Sydney Cricket Ground, he's gone on here today. It's a very good round of applause from this big crowd. Peter Kirsten here just picks it up over Martin Crowe, who's in there short, looking to save the single at the short boundary, and it's four runs. Kirsten goes to 50. Cover to three for 92, because Kirsten and Mitchison have consolidated. Mitchison now on to 24, a very valuable contribution. So we look across Eden Park, glorious day. Tell bowls in his final over. He's thrashed down to long off. Almost a great save by Rod Latham, but one feels it's not his day. Not enough two overs. Dive full length, knocked it down, and it rebounded into the ropes. Yeah, Peter Kirsten gets down the wicket to Patel. Over cover, and Latham desperately tries to save it. He pushes it forward and over the boundary. Boy, that's a sign of confidence. The Old sweep shot waiting for the ball to come, 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 and he hit it fine for four. Superb timing. This is a brilliant shot by Kirsten. The, the no one down there, fine on the lead side. And he's well forward long before the ball's bowled and just lays a bet on it. Great touch. Four runs. Out. Caught it mid on. He tried to hit that through the offside field. 
it hit the inside edge or certainly the inside part of the bat and looped up towards Madon. And so that's the end of Richardson. Out court trying to get on with uh, the over eight there. You can see him pulling it away to the Madon side and Larson taking the catch. Well, Dave Richardson had been giving Peter Kirsten good support there. 28 he made. Uh, very, uh, well, somewhat agricultural shot. There a lot of bottom hand coming into it. And South Africa now four for 100 mates. Adrian Caper is the new batsman. He's a big hitter. Well, that's a short delivery. I think it's a no ball. Surely, yes, no ball calls of the Indian umpires running in, pointing. And, oh, there's going to be a run out. There's going to be a, yes, he's out now, run out. Now the Indian umpire's out of position. Now he's giving him out. My goodness, it's all happening out there. I don't think the batsman heard the no ball call. The only way he can get out of a no ball is run out. And that's what's happened. And in fact, the Indian umpire very nearly got himself into a terrible situation there. He was running across towards his colleague for some reason, signalling no ball. And then all of a sudden, he was involved with a decision, which was a run-out decision. So up goes the hand. That's not out. In comes the ball. And the bowler there putting his head down. And have a look at all of this carry-on. Well, eventually he's out run out. And so the end result was, while on the one hand he wasn't out because of the no ball, he ended up being run out. That really was a comedy of errors. Five for 110. Well, there it is, the new batsman for South Africa, John T. Rhodes. Eden Park in Auckland. Straight back over his head. He tried to pull it a little squarer than that. And uh, perhaps rushed onto him, but quicker than he expected. Jonty Rhodes back to the second. Not quite where Jonty Rhodes intended this. Effective nonetheless, it's two runs. In the air and out, good catch, well taken. Jonty Rhodes out, caught at mid-wicket. Martin Crow diving away to his right, beautifully taken. So Rhodes, who had to really try and get on with it, is on his way back to the pavilion. John T. Rhodes again hits the ball in the air, picks it up off his toes. Brilliant diving catch by Martin Crow at mid-wicket. He's been very, very sharp there over the years. Let's very little go by. Safe pair of hands, get both, gets both hands onto it. John T. Rhodes out for six. South Africa now six for 121 and struggling. This is Brian McMillan, the South African all-rounder. Good shot. Beautifully placed. Here's Peter Kirsten now making an assault on this New Zealand bowling. And here Chris Cairns comes in, drops it short. Kirsten coming down the wicket, in fact, to him, dragging it straight over mid-wicket at the short boundary. Kirsten showing his intentions here. South Africa's king pin batted so wonderfully against Australia early in the week. Just away from the uh, long off, Rod Latham is the man in that position. Took him a while to get his placement right, Peter Kirsten, but he's certainly uh, got it sorted out now. It's Peter Kirsten here just gives himself a little bit of room. Willie Watson has been bringing, bringing it back. He bowled it wider outside the off stump. And uh, Kirsten attacked that short boundary. Four runs. No the ball, I think, was called. And that certainly heard a shout. Yes, it was the, uh, the umpire shouting no ball. Doesn't always mean just because an umpire has said no that it's no ball. The, I do recall one experience in South Africa where Doug Walters uh, was caught on the boundary after the umpire screamed out no. And uh, the umpire, his excuse was that he hadn't got the ball part of the call out. But I think one of the interesting features of the World Cup to date, uh, Ian, is that there's been 18 runouts in the tournament to date, and New Zealand have featured in six of those runouts, and that's a very high percentage. And I think that just typifies the way the New Zealand team has fielded in the last three matches. It's been quite outstanding. Long on. And Chris Cairns, well taken. He knew the boundary line was just behind him. 
I think uh, Kirsten felt that he might have an opportunity of clearing it. He knew the fieldsman was there, and he took up the challenge. Tremendous innings. Pity it wasn't rewarded with a century. Well, that's a magnificent innings by Peter Kirsten. As I say, the only one really to adapt to the pitch conditions out there. Coming down the wicket, give himself a little bit of room. Chris Cairns away down there in the deep mid-on boundary. Takes a well-judged catch. And that's a big wicket for New Zealand because Kirsten has scored his runs pretty quickly on these conditions. And it's 162 for seven in the 47th over. Richard Snell, he's the new man out there. This is Cairns now. It's also the last over. He's hit that one. It's going down towards mid-wicket. One bounce into the fence for four. So that's a good shot from McMillan right into the gap. Well, I suspect we're going to see about six of these sorts of shots coming into the last over here. It's a do-or-die thing now for uh, South Africa as they need as many as they can get. They can still be competitive with the score that they will end up with. That's Brian McMillan, who is a big man. And I'm sure he will be looking to flog it far wide and handsome try and get it over that boundary try and get try and get a couple of sixes if not fours but he's the one obviously that must have the strike they've blocked that area now they've moved a man in it's a mid wicket that's a good shot too he'll get two here there was a fumble down there but uh, that won't change it it's the gap now is a third man if they can get one away fine through that slip cordon area they brought the slip the third man up to what would be a deep gully i suppose and they've moved a the man into the gap at deep mid wicket so cairns has certainly got to be bowling at middle and leg there's anything outside the off stump certainly going to be four it can be dabbed away down there that vacant third man position as well bowled if that's the place to bowl them right up in the block hole isn't what you can do about them so Macmillan uh, just wanting to have a chat uh, with his opposite number. This may have something to do, Richard, with... Uh, we might just have to run for everything here, no matter what happens. Yes, they do. And the thing about bowling full, of course, right at the stumps, that if the batsman miss the new hit, and if you bowl full, it can only go one way. It can only go really straight in the V. If you bowl a little bit short, you can be hit anywhere in the paddock at all. A run to the keeper, even if he misses it. He doesn't. Back for the second. Yes, they're coming back for the second. The, right, the throw is wide. Macmillan, I think, came down the pitch and said, listen, we have to run for everything. And then all of a sudden, decided that uh, there may not be two there. Had the throw been to the non-striker's end and straight, he would have been in real trouble. Yes, uh, sloppy cricket there by New Zealand. That ball should have come in a lot quicker and a better return than that. But uh, well run by South Africa. I mean, they've got to run for everything, as you say, Tony. And uh, even if they lose a wicket, well, that's tough. But it's the runs on the board, and every run counts. It's very precious out there. They're very hard to come by. 184, the score. Two balls to go. Just chip that in the air. Will they come back for the second? Yes, they will. And yes, that's good running again, putting a lot of pressure in the New Zealand field that uh, tends to be crumbling just a little bit in this last over. I do is still quite a big field out there and two's uh, relatively easy. Brian McMillan, he decided that there was two there. As soon as that ball left the bat, he was running two. Last ball of the innings. 11 runs off the over so far. It's a good shot. Will that be four? Yes, it will. Into the fence. A good way to finish for South Africa. So the score now moves on to seven down for 190. Well, once again, a slow, low pitch here at Eden Park in Auckland and the South African batsman having a bit of trouble coming to terms with it. That is all apart from Peter Kirsten with a magnificent 90. He was finally caught on the long on boundary and uh, what a very good innings that was from him. Ten fours in that innings. He got good support from uh, firstly the keeper, David Richardson, and then Brian McMillan playing well at the end with 33 not out. South Africa making seven for 190 from their uh, 50 overs. Good bowling from most of the New Zealanders. Willie Watson, who started out with Deepak Patel. He picked up a couple of wickets, Patel one wicket, and two wickets to Chris Cairns, who wasn't used until six chains. 
Rod Latham there taking a bit of stick from his two overs. OK, let's now see what the response is from New Zealand. And it's almost a full house. Uh, not quite full, but I'd say there's, there was 27,000 here last Saturday. I'd say there's 30,000 today. A few more in the terraces. Over the top. Good shot. You can do this at the beginning of a one-day match. You really do take the pressure off. That's a lovely shot. All the fields went inside the circle. And away she goes for four. New Zealand are off to a good start. No wicket for 11. South Africa need quick wickets. Into the gap again. The New Zealanders have decided to go for it from the word go. And that's into the fence for 4-2. There's nothing much Vessels can do about this. He's got a third man and a fine leg back. And these Kiwis have decided to try and hit the ball over the top straight. Superstaff, that's a positive frame of mind. First Latham, now great batch going to the onside against the faster Mc Alan Donald. Hit that cleanly, um, just wide of the man at mid on inside the circle. Oh, that's gone high in the air, way down the ground, a magnificent hit. It's gone for six. What a beauty! That has gone straight over the side screen. What a magnificent straight hit that was. Great batch giving it everything he's got. South Africa are in trouble here. New Zealand, no wicket for 30. And uh, what a good shot that was. Magnificent straight hit. You won't get many better than that. In the air, into the gap. That's 4-2. The New Zealanders here are going berserk. It's been a long time since they've seen their side perform like this. They were absolutely thumped by England. And all of a sudden, they beat Australia. And here they are now giving the South Africans a real hammering. Well, Kepler Vessels is making a change. Macmillan is being taken out of the attack and Richard Snell is being brought into the attack. Great batch going over the top again. It's going to run down very quickly for four runs through mid-wicket there. Plenty of space over the top of this field and great batch not shy to use it. Well, Mark, great batch has been very positive. The bottom hand coming in there, David, and the typical left-hander shot from time to time, I suppose, isn't it? Well, one of my shots, not so much one of yours, maybe, but <laughs> it's the end result that counts. It's going to be Tessius Bosch. Well, you can't bowl there on this sort of pitch, short and wide outside the off stump. Latham is very, very severe on that. I'm sure a lot of Australian batsmen would have love to be facing that sort of delivery well boss will learn very quickly if he continues to bowl like that that it's not the right thing to do rod latham hitting that very firmly through the offside offside and new zealand reaching 50 off 63 balls 30 runs off 40 balls a very positive start from mark great batch well that's gone a long way in the air and it's six runs it's cleared the short boundary umpire pillar reporter apparently not quite sure asking of Alan Donald and confirming six runs there to Mark Greatbatch well that's Greatbatch's second six of the innings didn't quite get onto it wasn't going in the right place David was it I think he was looking to hit it more over mid off but uh, really got the bottom hand there and hitting it really over wide third man for six and quite an incredible shot That's a far better shot, more controlled. This time, great batches. Middle the ball, hit it down behind square, found the gap well. Four more runs, ten runs off the first two balls of this Richard Snell over. And Richard Snell finding life a lot harder here at Eden Park than he did at the SCG a few days back. It just goes to show you this game is in fact a great lever. But that's a beautifully ex executed shot there by great Batch. Probably one of these, uh, one of his better shots in the innings. And again, Kepler Vessels is forced to make a change. It's now Adrian Caper. It's too late, of course, though, David, isn't it? The way the New Zealand are playing at the moment. In fact, really, the bowling performance by Sri Lanka, uh, by uh, South Africa, rather, hasn't been that impressive today. They've just failed to adapt to these conditions. And that is an experience. And their fielding, too, is letting them down. It's not the same as the NC SCG performance, of course, against the Australians. Everything's gone wrong for South Africa today, except winning the toss. And that's Mark Greatbatch's 50. 
And he's only taken in 50 balls. He's had seven fours and two sixes. So that's been a marvellous innings by Mark Greatbatch coming back into the side in the absence of John Wright, who's injured. And Greatbatch has taken this opportunity to the full. More runs. And that's going to run away down to very fine leg there. Not going to be caught. It just seems that the New Zealand batsman, Mark Greatbatch, Rod Latham, just have to stand there to get runs today. And South Africans, in stark contrast to their performance at the SCG against Australia, learning very quickly that this game can change round in a big, big hurry. And there's six this more. This is high again. It's hit a long, long way over mid-wicket. This is bouncing on top of the stand, it must be. There's no danger the fielder catching it. It's a shortish boundary there, but that would have cleared a lot bigger boundaries. That's New Zealand, none for 103. Vessels trying everything with his bowling attack. He's now resorted to off spin in the form of uh, Peter Kirsten, the top scorer. Ah. And he's done the job. Peter Kirsten has got through Great Batch. Great Batch was definitely in the mood to keep going. He's annoyed with himself, but he really has set things up for the New Zealand side. Peter Kirsten having a good day. Yes, this is. A breakthrough that sort of uh, certainly need in pretty desperate straits. And what a fine innings by Mark Greatback. Kirsten just throwing it up, middle and leg, turning slightly. Mark Greatback looking to hit it over Madon, slightly against the spin, bold. New Zealand won for 114. And Andrew Jones, the new man. Monty Rhodes, oh, and there's five now. So what so it was a sharp single turns into an easy five as things continue to go wrong for South Africa. Rod Latham just one short of his half century. He and uh, Mark Greatbatch got the New Zealanders way to a terrific start. And that brings up 50 for Rod Latham. Fine innings. There was a suspicion earlier in the day that it wasn't quite going to be Rod Latham's day. Two overs with the ball, cost 19 runs, but he's played very well here for 50. Came off 56 balls with six fours and one five, an unusual statistic, courtesy of an overthrow or four. But he's certainly put New Zealand on track here, along with Mark Greatbatch. What is turning out to be, and certainly looking at the moment, to be a very easy victory. Nice shot to go all the way. So Andrew Jones getting into the act with a perfectly placed cover drive. Peter Kirsten over pitching here. A nice juicy full toss. Andrew Jones saying thank you very much indeed. And it doesn't take long to get down to the extra cover boundary. Richard Snell comes back into the attack. Catch out for 68 off only 60 balls faced. It's another fine shot, that'll be four more, beautifully played. He's having a glorious afternoon, timing the ball well, placing it to perfection. Richard Snell losing his line again, firing it in towards the legs of Rod Latham, who's timed this beautifully. Although the South Africans had a lot of trouble earlier in the day timing the ball, the New Zealanders have used the pace of the South African bowlers. And this is four more easy runs for Rod Latham. 56 off 61 balls face. That's fantastic when you consider his partner was sco scoring at a runner ball as well. That's right, Mark Great bat over a runner ball. And very unusual, of course, for opening batsmen to be going at that sort of rate. They normally take more time to see themselves in. 
it's safe. Uh, all the luck New Zealand. Just bounced short. He threw his boot out a couple of vessels, kicked it away, but went for four. So it's all happening for New Zealand at Eden Park. This will be three out of three. What a great start in the World Cup for them. Well, this is sums up the day, I'm afraid, for South Africa. Kept the vessel seeing that very late. In the end, it wasn't his hand he threw at it, it was the boot. Got something on it, but not enough to stop it going for four. It's not helping Richard Snell's figures either. He's gone, yes, straight to Kepler Vessels at Swift. That's the end of a fine innings from Rod Latham. And Richard Snell breaks through for the second wicket. Well, well taken by Kepler Vessels at Swift. They're very safe hands. Standing slightly wide in a second slip position there. A wicket for Richard Snell there in the middle of the South African bunch. Rod Latham's played very well. Between the two opening batsmen, Latham and great batch, New Zealand have really taken this game away from the South Africans. Slightly wide, full drive, goes quickly to Vessels there. And he'll be thinking, why couldn't we have done that about ooh, 27 overs ago? New Zealand, 2 for 155. Ian Smith coming in at number four. 35 year old wicketkeeper batsman. Good start by Smith, full toss, and he punches it away for four. Wow, well, listen to the roar of the big crowd at Eden Park. Snell not getting it right. Smith coming in, finding the gap. Well, Ian Smith promoted to number four in the order. And a nice friendly welcome there from Richard Snell. Full toss, a little bit of bottom hand. Ian Smith finds the gap. Four more. Nice little birthday present, Ian Smith's birthday apparently a day or two ago showing that just because you turn 35 there's no reason you can't carry on playing oh he's going down the ground again oh wow how about that good afternoon mr snell and two balls two fours this time a length ball from richard snell disdainfully taken over the top by ian smith Two balls, eight runs. That's four more, that's 12 off three. Ian Smith comes in and strikes three, boundaries off the meat of the bat. It's two for 167. Wow, what a start by Ian Smith. 35 years of age, promoted into number four position by the cap captain Martin Crow. He didn't let him down. Well, three fours in succession there. There's a variety of entertainment available in Auckland tonight. There's the Rod Stewart concert. Perhaps Ian Smith's got tickets for that. Shot, that's four more. Oh, this is a batting exhibition worth seeing anywhere in the world. New Zealanders in sparkling touch. Well, even if this game isn't going to last a full 100 overs, this New Zealand crowd here at Auckland being given full entertainment by their own batsman. Andrew Jones joining in on the act. Immaculately played cover drive, full length delivery from Peter Kirsten. Easy win by New Zealand is going to happen here as Alan Donald comes back into the attack. Ian Smith. gone again that's four more four fours and a single for Ian Smith he's in good form well if he was given a message before he came out to bat Martin Crowe's told him look net run rate could be important later in the competition he just go out there throw the bat and this is the result another great shot hit it very high very cleanly one bounce into the fence over mid off and this to South Africa's main strike bowler Alan Donald Comes again to Ian Smith. Smith's gone again. It's a good clean hit. Mid-off coming in. Should be gone. Yes, he's out. 19 runs off. About 10 balls for Ian Smith. Great entertainment. That's the third wicket down. But New Zealand coasting to a big win here at Eden Park. Well, Ian Smith can go and make his appointment wherever it is now in 20 minutes' time. 
He's entertained the crowd again. He's thrown the bat at virtually every ball. This time he's given himself room. He's aimed over mid-off. There's a man out there. Comes in comfortably. It's Peter Kirsten who not looking very happy to have taken the catch. He knows this game is long lost. New Zealand now 303 for 179. Martin Crow joins Andrew Jones and he'd be a very happy man. Martin Crow, as we see there, Smith holding out in the end for 19 of eight balls, in fact. Peter Kirsten took the catch. Smith did his job. He just came in and entertained the crowd and made sure that New Zealand weren't going to lose their way by hanging around, pushing the ball. He just smashed the ball all over the place. That's a nice deflection as well. That go maybe not all the way, but certainly very close to it. Trying hard, and it goes all the way. The boundary is flowing here at Eden Park for the New Zealand batsmen who have placed the ball superbly. Giving a long chase for Richard Snell from wide long leg. But again, enough pace on the ball. The timing good enough to take the ball through mid-wicket for four. Four more good runs to Andrew Jones. And he's been in fine touch this afternoon here at Eden Park. Three for 187. Four runs required by New Zealand to win this match as Bosch comes into the attack from the northern end. Jones, 31. Crow, 2. That's through the covers, it may go all the way. The crowd roaring, now they'll be cut off just inside the fence. They'll come back for three. So the scores are level, with seven wickets in hand. Tercius Bosch, the bowler from the north end. It doesn't look as though this is going to be a very long spell for him. The score is now tied. A very, very competent performance this by the New Zealand team. They've been on top literally from the first ball of the day, the first two overs of the day, Maidens. Ever since then, it's been all New Zealand's way. There it is. New Zealand win by seven wickets. A magnificent performance at Eden Park in front of a big crowd. After 50 overs, South Africa 190 in reply. New Zealand three for 191. Well, Martin Crow has masterminded another New Zealand triumph. This is a very, very comfortable win with over 15 overs to spare. New Zealand top of the table now is six points. Well, New Zealand made a bit of a mess of that required run rate of 3.82 thanks to a magnificent uh, start from Mark Greatbatch and Rod Latham. Greatbatch it was with 68 off just 60 balls, nine fours and three sixes, and Rod Latham with 60. Seven fours, a five in there, thanks to some overthrows, and he faced just 69 balls. Andrew Jones, 34, not out. Ian Smith with a quick fire, 19, and the captain, Martin Crow, had the luxury of just uh, facing a few balls and seeing the winning runs hit. So plenty of overs to spare there for New Zealand in that victory, and they've now chalked up three out of three. Not such a pretty sight for the South African bowlers. Donald was the most dangerous with one for 38 from 10 overs. Snell very expensive in picking up his wicket. And Kirsten bowled some tidy off spin, one for 22 off seven overs. Not surprisingly, it was Mark Greatbatch who got the Man of the Match award. A terrific innings from him. So uh, from Eden Park, it's good night from all of us on Wide World of Sports.